Um, so the, the organizing is, you know, taught me to like not function out of that weird deficit position when it comes to this concept of love, but to, um, have abundance, to appreciate it, to trust it. Um, it's not like you're going to go anywhere. It's not like you're going to lose the love of like mother earth. Like that's not, that's never going to happen. Like she's not actually going to stop. She'll always give, she'll always give. Or like the love of pray of prayer, for example, or sharing these types of spaces with people, whether they're ceremonies or front lines. Um, but yeah, there's just like, it truly is like, there's so much love all around us all the time. And, you know, in ceremonies, they say like, you're blanketed in prayers. Like that's like a, like a saying. And it is actually true because it's like, what it's like what our ancestors and what our holy people are trying to show us they're like you goddamn humans why are you always so sad you know like why are you why are you struggling so much can't you see all of the love and the beauty around you it's like they're shaking us sometimes it's how i feel um sometimes like when i come out of a ceremony or something and they're like you're literally blanketed in prayers like you're never alone like don't forget that you need to actually be able to see the world for what it is. And it's a world filled with love, you know? And like, that's to me, like one of the biggest messages from being indigenous, you know, and having, having this way of life to, to guide, to guide us, you know, um, instead of being like, Oh my God, capitalism is like so profoundly alienating. And then liberalism is just like, it just confuses you and makes you feel like shit because it's telling you that the things that are good, that the things that are actually bad for you are good for you. And then you're like, why do I feel this way? And then like individualism just makes you feel isolated all the time from other people. and You don't know how to have relationships. And then you just like, you know, just get like trapped in your own brain and stuff like that. And the social media makes you feel really shitty about yourself. And the heteropatriarchy makes you feel ugly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> makes you feel like ugly and like unworthy. It's just like, and then racism just makes you feel like, you're like, I might as well just die. <laughs> like That's what's being reinforced to me all the time. And it's like, oh my God, the world that we think is our, re the world that is our reality, like wrapped up in all of these structures is just so gross. It's so gross and it's insane, you know? And it's just deranged. And I think being able to just like see the world through the eyes of like our ancestors, for example, and they're like, nah, the world is actually a very beautiful place. And just like, let that into your heart and let that guide you. And that's what, that's what you need. You'll be good from that point forward. That'll be your source of strength. I, yeah, it's been, I, don't, I, I fight a lot. I'm very stubborn. I'm just like, you know, it's taken me a long time, I think, to find peace. I think to find peace. And it even, I mean, people have different views on the Red Nation. Like, I'm sure people will be like, you guys are mean. And then like, we get accused of being too angry or whatever. And I'm like, actually, we're not really, we're not really angry people. Like, actually, um, we're, what is angry people of peace? I think it's been said before, but the anger comes from an impulse of self-defense. You're trying to defend the things that you love. And so like, that's not the same thing as like, you know, dropping bombs on people. Like self-defense is an act of profound love, I would say. And so when Red Nation is going hard, it's just because we're defending and protecting, you know, our nations and our people and the things we love. But yeah, I think people have lots of different conceptions about who we are, but I would say that we're actually, as Kylie said, people who have like pretty much bottomless love and pretty much bottom bottomless love for liberation for the future and for our people. Yeah, that's real. <laughs> I, uh, before I joined the Red Nation, I was like a capital L like liberal. <laughs> so, um, oh gosh, that's my secret. <laughs> Confession. Confession time. <laughs> I was too, Kylie. I was too. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, what a time. What a time. But I think... Um, you know, being in the Red Nation um, has taught me so much, um, not just about myself, but also just how to um, be in community 
to trust other people. Like, I trust my comrades with my life. <laughs> like, um, and I think it is because uh, our comrades are so honest, you know? Everyone is so honest with each other. And like Mel said, like, people accuse us of being mean or we have, like, tough love or whatever, <laughs> you know? But that honesty is actually what you need to hear to, like, turn things around, you know? Like, if I didn't have people telling me or trying to encourage me to see reality, like, see the world for how it is, I would still be a liberal, I'd, all caps, like... <laughs> Um, and I think that, you know, cause before when I, before my sphere was like turned inward. So I was having trouble moving forward and having trouble, I guess, like just being considerate of other people and, uh, it, like inconsiderate of the conditions, um, of just, like, being a pro, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, that totally, I just was not seeing it because I was just constantly operating in, like, the deficient, as you were describing, Mel, of just, like, striving to be a perfectionist, striving to be what everybody else wanted me to be, um, you know, this perfect individual, uh, beauty standards, um, pleasing a man. Oh God. It just makes me like, just cringe. It just makes me cringe when I think about it. And, um, so it may, it may, like, whenever I think about that, I, I am so grateful of revolutionaries who s had the courage to speak the truth just bluntly and directly. Um, like Honani K. Trask, you know, she's like standing in front of her people and, encourage them to encouraging them to move away from thinking of, of themselves as an American you know like we are not American say it in your heart say it in your sleep like and then even like Fred Hampton if you're afraid of socialism you're afraid of yourself uh Lee Miracle uh we don't need to go back to the land we never left so I'm so grateful that there are those messages out there because um it's a reminder of like there's there there's a world beyond liberalism and capitalism and I think what people struggle with is um letting go of the perfect world <laughs> and letting go of the idea that there's perfect people and I think with communism and socialism um it teaches you that and also like it teaches you to accept that there are no perfect people like we're all complex human beings and that love is multi-dimensional um because like in the red nation you know one of our comrades cleo she always keeps medicine at the office for people to pick up um they're always burning like sage cleo feeds people <laughs> and that's all from um just having like a love for humanity like no matter what their like ideology is or you know how much money they have um there's always that act of solidarity um, with other human beings and other, like, non-human beings, right? Like, um, there's water protectors in the Red Nation, <laughs> land defenders, um, and we all just, like, exist within this framework of, like, uh, of liberation and just, you know, being honest with each other, trusting each other caring for others like beyond just ourselves um 
Yeah, it's there's there's just so much to it. There's so much to it. 